Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be carrying out a replacement of the wheel bearings in the front wheel of my VFR 800. Thank you for stopping by. Right then, what, I'm, uh, what I've done recently is just had the tyre changed. Uh, as you can see, brand new tyre. I've gone with the uh, Bridgestone BT-023 again. That was what uh, came off it. I've got a BT-023 on the rear. And I actually quite like this tyre. Um, for some reason, they do get a bit of a, a, bit of a hounding on uh, some of the Facebook groups. Um, people saying that they're rubbish tyres. I don't know why. I've ridden on Michelin McAdams. Um, in the past going back 25 years and I can tell you they actually are rubbish tires these I, I, I find actually uh, quite quite good um, as a touring tire I certainly wouldn't do a track day on them um, I, I wouldn't fit them to me R1 for example but for, for VFR um, I, I challenge anyone to um, you know outdo these tires I, I, I think they're perfectly adequate for uh, for the use to which they're intended anyway enough of that what you've uh, what you've stopped by to see is uh, a wheel bearing change, so that's what we're going to do. Right, <coughs> what I've got here: a couple of blocks of wood, couple blocks of workshop wood. As you can see, they're pretty pretty filthy from uh, from previous use. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rest the wheel on there. That way, the brake disc isn't resting on the floor. If you just lay your wheel down on the floor, the the disc will be on the deck, and you don't really want to uh, put the weight of the wheel on the brake disc because you can uh, you can damage it and brake discs are expensive, so let's not do that. Okay, let's have a look at what we've got here. Right, so, bearings and dust seals. So, uh, I've got the genuine Honda bearings. Um, obviously, you can get cheaper ones, um, but we, you know, with bearings and things like that, I do like to go uh, OE where possible. Um, the total cost um, of these parts, I think, was around about 60 quid. Um, I'll put a link to um, where I got them from, which was Fowler's Motorcycles in Bristol. Um, so you can, uh, you can stop by there and have a look. Simply two bearings and two dust seals, one for each side. So there we are. Let's, um, let's have a look at the actual process of replacement. Okay then, so to start, what we need to do is we need to get the dust, uh, the dust seals out. That's simply done with a screwdriver or a pry bar. Just like so. Pop that to one side. Uh, yeah. Pop that to one side, flip her over, and we'll do the same on the other side. go that's the two dust seals removed and they're scrap because obviously we've got brand new ones now in here we can see the bearing it actually doesn't feel like there's anything wrong with it it feels okay um, there's no there's no real noise from it and it, it, it turns fairly smoothly um, but I've got the parts now so I've got the opportunity to make a video uh, and show all you guys right inside is a spacer which is sitting basically between the uh, between the two bearings, you've got a bearing at each side, and then there's a spacer tube between them, and that's what you can hear. I'm rocking it backwards and forwards from side to side. Now, what we need to do next is obviously remove the bearings. Now, there's a couple of methods we can do uh, we can use to do this. We can either bang them out um, with a pry bar, which what I'm, what I'm, in fact what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one using the pry bar and hammer method, and then the other one I'm going to use a special pull, um, bearing puller tool, um, which can be which can be bought very, very cheaply on eBay um, because that's where I got mine from. Um, so what I'll do, first thing I'll do um, is uh, I'll use my little, my little pry, but I've got a set of three of these. This one's probably um, probably a bit short, so I'll get a, I'll get along uh, the, the next size up. And um, what we'll do, we'll, we'll use the pry bar to get the first bearing driven out. Uh, and then I'll use my other set of tools to get the other one out so you can see the both methods. 
Okay, right. What I'm going to use to uh, drive the bearings out uh, of their locations is um, just a pry bar. Obviously, it's got a bend on the end, which makes it perfectly ideal, and it's quite pointy and sharp at the uh, at the very end. Um, so it's perfectly uh, perfectly suited for this kind of job. Now, you've got a bearing at each end with a spacer between them. The aim of this game is to make the spacer move to one side so that you've got the inner edge of the bearing. Then what we're going to do is that is going to then rest on the inner edge. And then we're going to drive it out, swap it around, drive it out, swap it around, drive it out. And we keep doing that until such time as the bearing's all the way out. Now, um, um, there is a drawing of what I'm, what I'm trying to demonstrate in the manual, so I'll put that up on the, on the screen right now so you can see what, I'm, uh, what uh, is going on in my mind. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's have a go. The, you can hear the spacer. I don't know if you can hear that or not. Um, you can hear it rattling around inside and you can hear it push, me pushing it from side to side. Don't know if you can hear that or not. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push it to one side now, get my pry bar in there and now that is resting on the bearing on the opposite side. Now I'm gonna give it a good thump and then move the Spacer to the other side. And another good thumb. Now, what I'm going to do, again, other side again. Moving the spacer over. And a good thump. I'm going to keep doing that until the bearing comes out. So I'll, I'll crack on, speed up a little bit so we're, uh, so we're smashing through it. And then um, we'll have a little chat about it at the end. And there we are. That is the bearing and the uh, and the spacer removed. So as you can see, we're all good in here, ready to uh, accept a new bearing. I'll give it a little bit of clean up in a moment. Um, what I've got to do now is obviously get the bearing out from the other side. Now, what I can do actually is exactly the same um, exactly the same method as before. Uh, but what I want to do is um, I want to have a go with another tool that I've got and see if um, see if that makes it any easier. Okay, what I've got here is um, the, this is basically a set of bearing uh, pulling tools, and all they are is uh, like a sleeve with a with a threaded rod down the middle. And as you screw it in, you can see it opens up. So what you do is you put it inside, screw it down, it'll open up inside the bearing, and then it gives you something to pull up. Slide hammers. We've got um, like a pulling bridge. What I'm going to try and use is the uh, is the slide hammer because it's pretty quick and uh, pretty quick and simple so what I'll do I'll get this um, in behind the bearing these are pretty good for uh, for um, blind bearings as well so um, you know in, uh, in engine cases and stuff like that where you can get in behind them these are uh, perfect for that kind of scenario okay I think we're uh, I think we're on the bearing let's Give it a go with a slide hammer. Okay, right. Let's the wheel down with my legs. Here she comes, look. And there we are. A little bit easier than the uh, than the other method, but um, you know, it's up to you. Um, if you've got the uh, if you've got the tools to at your disposal, then why not use them? Uh, right. There we go. And there's the other the other bearing. As I said before, it feels quite good. Um, it's pretty. Uh, 
pretty free moving, but as I said, we've got the uh, we've got the ones to replace it with. So what I'll do, I'll give these a bit of a clean up, and then we'll look at getting the new bearings fitted. Okay then, brand new bearings. There's the part number for these if you want them, and the part number for the dust seals. Let's, uh, let's break one out. Right, as you can see, these are an identical part to the ones I removed. Um, so they're these are the genuine these are genuine bearings. Well, I don't know how long these have been in there. This bike's done twenty six thousand miles. It's unlikely to need wheel bearings in that time. I wouldn't have thought. Um, but uh, yeah. So um, one thing to point out, you'll see on this there's markings on there on the inner race, and none on that side. Put the mark in so that they point outwards. Um, I'm pretty sure it says that in the manual anyway and uh, fit the bearing like so now there's different people that do different methods for this some people pop them in the freezer overnight so that they contract ever so slightly and then other people will heat up the outer race and then bang them in yeah you can do that not really necessary uh, as I'm about to show you uh, now how easy it is to drive them in anyway when they're at ambient temperature and it's a pretty cold day so what I'm going to do I'm going to get another tool out uh, and then we'll uh, we'll drive this uh, this bearing home Okay, what we've got here is a bearing uh, driver set. Um, all you need to do is select the, the right size driver for the bearings that you're about to fit. Now you want to drive on the outer edge, not on the inner edge. Uh, make sure that you're actually driving onto the outer edge. Um, if you just, for example, if I was to use that one, I'd be driving onto the inner and that can damage the bearing. So we, we want to avoid that and actually drive on the outer race of the bearing. So in order to set this up, all we need once we've selected the right one, is our driver, because we're going to whack this with a hammer, get the nut on like so, and I think it's that size, no it isn't, it was that one, there we go, give it a little nip up, and there we go, we're ready to go, so take your hammer, As you can see, it's going in quite nicely. Now, what we're doing is we need to get the bearing properly seated uh, at the bottom of its um, recess. Now, when you get to that point, you should hear a change in the in the in the tone. Um, you can hear it's a bit of a ringing sound at the moment, like a it, it, which echoes afterwards. But once we've got it home, that note will change, and you'll see in a second. As you can see, that was a that was a completely different sound. Um, so that's that bearing home, and uh, I'm happy that that one's uh, nice and nice and square and in where it's supposed to be. So what we need to do now: flip the wheel over, take our spacer, and drop her in. Um, it, 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 you can't misalign it. There's actually, if you look in in the bottom of here. Uh, I'll put my fin little finger in. Just where my little finger is, you can see there's, it's slightly recessed and the space, the end of the spacer actually fits into that little recess. So pop her in, you can't, you can't get her misaligned. So it will sit in the right place, just like so. Take our other bearing. Don't do what I just did and uh, stab yourself in the finger with the staples that they're uh, that, that have gone through the packaging. That's quite painful. Obviously, give it a lick, a little bit of oil all over my fingers. That's all good. Uh, again, markings on the outside. Take our bearing driver. Again, we heard the sound change and the spacer and the bearing are still turning and there's still a little bit of side to side movement in the spacer but it's snug it's there's no lateral movement where it, which is basically the way it needs to be so that's both 
bearings installed. All we've got to do now is fit the dust seals. Right then, dust seals. Again, trying to avoid the uh, the staple. Let's rip them open, get one of the dust seals out. Now, what we need to do with this, just a tiny little bit of, tiny little bit of grease on the inside and around the outside edge. And pop that in place like so. Again, getting your bearing driver again. I could have probably switched to a larger one if I wanted to, but what we're aiming to do is just tap it down around its outside edge. And as you could hear there, there was a difference in the way it sounded. Flip her over. Same again with this one. Get that flame and staple out of the way. God. Lance my thumb again. A little dab of grease again. Side, pop her in, and away we go. These take absolutely minimal effort to uh, to drive home. There's absolutely no effort required, really. They go, they they practically fall in. Okay, that is the process for um, changing wheel bearings. As you can see, it's not a particularly challenging job, but one that a lot of people will probably um, give up on and, and, and take to a dealer instead of having a go themselves. Um, it took me, that was probably 15 minutes altogether. Um, and yeah, it, it, the job's done. Um, the parts came to around about 60 pounds for genuine Honda items. If you went to a dealership, they'd probably charge you an hour's labor, which can be, as we know, as much as 50 or 60 quid. So you'd be looking at, circa 110 120 quid to do something that could only cost you 60 quid so you're looking at double the price just for the labor and that's if they only charge you an hour's labor um they may may, may charge you more um okay hopefully you uh, you enjoyed this video and found it useful if you did please um leave a comment leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel um one thing I do want to point out, uh, looking at my analytics for the channel, um, I'm only getting views from 12% uh, um, of my subscription base. Actually, no, that's not what I mean. What I mean is 12% um, of my views come from subscribers. So what I'd like to try and do is convert that other 88% into subscribers. So if there's something that, um, on my channel that you like, please hit that subscribe button and uh, come back for more. Anyway, guys, uh, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you all again very soon for the next video. Ta-ta. Bye-bye.